Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan and today I'm going to be talking to you about cognitive biases. So right off the bat, just to clear something up, when you hear the word bias, what you might immediately think of is sort of a bias in reporting or in politics or something like that, um, where someone sort of leans to the left or the right or Republican, Democrat, whatever. Uh, it's important to know that this is not the kind of bias that a cognitive bias is. When we talk about a cognitive bias, what we're talking about is a systematic and predictable error in judgment um, that people make really just due to the way our brains are wired. Um, and this will become a lot more clear as we go on. And another important thing about cognitive biases that we'll sort of reiterate throughout this lesson is that they happen outside of our conscious awareness. We're not aware that we're making these errors in judgment. So right off the bat, we'll give an example of something called confirmation bias. So we'll just go ahead and write that down. So confirmation bias is the tendency for people to only seek out facts and evidence that conforms to what they already think. We, we seek to confirm our own opinions. Um, so an example of this could be sort of a lawyer or a jurist scrolling through cases and information and only finding the evidence that would help their case. Now, again, I want to return to this idea that a bias is unconscious and outside of our awareness. If you were to take this lawyer and ask him if he was only seeking out the evidence that was pertinent to his argument, he would say, no, of course not. That's not what I do. The whole idea with a bias is that it's, it's just the way our brains are wired. We, we just make, this mis make these mistakes, and most of the time we're not even aware that we've made a mistake. Um, so another example that shows this really nicely is something called availability bias. Availability bias. So availability bias is very interesting because it can also have sort of very practical policy implications. So what availability bias tells us is that the way we think about the frequency of events is a function of how easy they are to recall them from memory. So a good example of this is something like a terrorist attack. We often perceive terrorist attacks as being pretty common, being a pretty big threat, because when you try to think of a terrorist attack, it's a lot of very salient images immediately come to your mind. Um, when in reality, the base rate statistics of terrorist attacks is that they're not that common. Not nearly as common as something like, say, a car accident, which is much more likely to be a danger to you but because people don't report on the news every time there's a car accident, it's, it's not as easily imagined in your mind, and therefore you don't think of it as as common. That's what the availability bias is. And so a little bit more into the details of these biases, there's often in psychology what we'll refer to as dual system thought. There is system one, which is sort of fast and quick thinking and relies on something called heuristics which are sort of quick, intuitive rules of thumb. And then there's system two, which is more slow, deliberative, and calculating. And these biases sort of live in system one. Uh, you'll often hear the phrase heuristics and biases because they sort of go hand in hand. We've, we've evolved these rules of thumb um, to solve the problems that were problems to us during evolution. And now we're sort of just stuck with this brain that's wired in a way to solve these old problems, leaving us with these biases. Um, so just to talk about maybe one more bias, there are also, on top of these biases, there are a lot of biases associated with memory. Um, and a good example of which is that we're more likely to think that a memory that happened during a very emotionally salient time, for example, during a catastrophe, is more accurate than it actually is. So between that memory bias, the confirmation bias, the availability bias, um, you can get a really good handle on what a cognitive bias is. Again, the real big things to take away is that cognitive biases happen outside of our awareness. Um, unless you learn about it specifically, no one was really aware that they're only seeking evidence that confirms what they already thought or that they are only afraid of shark attacks because it's easy to think of a shark attack. Um, if this is something you're interested in, 
There's a book called Thinking Fast and Slow, written by the psychologist Daniel Kahneman, um, who discovered a lot of these biases, that really delves into detail, and um, it's really a great work. Um, so thank you so much. My name is Jonathan, and I hope you learned today.